Hi everyone, this is Death Discomfort, and today I want to talk to you guys about the aquarium nitrogen cycle. And what the nitrogen cycle really is, is something that happens in all natural ecosystems, I'm sure. And it's a very important part of, of uh, starting up your aquarium because you will promote healthy fish because you will have uh, good water conditions. Um, okay, so let me start off by saying you have two sets of bacteria that you need to allow to colonize in your aquarium, but mainly in your filter media and on the hard surfaces <clears throat> excuse me, of your aquarium, like the gravel and the plants and the decorations, etc. Um, the first set of bacteria eat ammonia. And ammonia comes from decomposing fish waste, di dead fish, decomposing fish, uh, decomposing fish food, anything like that. That's where ammonia comes from. And they eat this stuff. And ammonia is not good for your fish. It causes all kinds of problems and usually your fish will not pull through uh, if they come in contact with, with ammonia. So this first bacteria, it eats the ammonia and its byproduct is nitrites. And nitrites are not good for your fish either. Nitrites uh, can cause something called uh, brown blood disease. It's basically where they suffocate internally and they die. So the second set of bacteria now, they grow because the nitrites are starting to rise since that's the byproduct of the first set of bacteria that eat the ammonia. So these second set of bacteria eat the nitrites and what they convert is something called nitrates. And nitrates are not as harmful to fish in lower amounts, but there's no bacteria that's usually present in the aquarium that eats nitrates. So it is our duty as the, the aquarium owners to perform weekly or bi-weekly partial water changes uh, to lower the levels so they don't get too high. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why we do water changes, if not the main reason. Um, usually having your uh, your nitrate levels under 20 parts per million or ppm is uh, ideal but most fish uh, I mean more sensitive fish can prefer it uh, anywhere from 1 to 5 parts per million so it's really up to the, to the type of fish you have as well and frequency of water changes as well depends on your setup um, too so I'll tell you what you will need First things first, you'll need your aquarium, you'll need water conditioner, you will need uh, your gravel, your decorations, and all of that, what you want to put in your aquarium. You'll need your filter and filter media. <clears throat> um, a heater, of course, if you live in colder climates. Um, you'll need fish food. Uh, usually fish flakes is, you know, staple. Um, and you'll need... Uh, an aquarium liquid testing kit for fresh water obviously because I usually deal with fresh water and those are the main things that you'll need um, obviously fishnet um, and you'll need uh, gravel vacuum but those are for later times um, this is for cycling is what I'm trying to explain so what I'll show you what I have I have a aquarium pharmaceuticals uh, yeah aquarium pharmaceuticals are appy is what I call it a freshwater master test kit and even though I've lost some things out of this um, it comes with uh, let's see let's start out. it comes with ammonia tester Nitri uh, nitrate tester, nitrite tester, which is one bottle, and it comes with a high range pH and a, a regular range pH tester as well. It comes with these uh, pipettes, 
I think. No, the pipette is the squeezy thing. Um, I guess these are testing tubes uh, that goes up to five milliliters where your water should go, that line right there. Other testers may be different. Keep that in mind. And then it comes with the scale, color scale, for each test. Um, and it also comes with a directions booklet, but I have seemed to have misplaced mine, but I do know how to use them. But um, definitely make sure you check your uh, directions booklet. Um, and also these, uh, these liquids are harmful if you touch them, and you definitely do not want to put them in your aquarium. I know some people who have actually made that mistake. So definitely do not put this in your aquarium. If you are touching anything that has, that has this stuff on it, you want to make sure to wash your hands, don't touch your face or anything like that. Um, because they can be, um, I know the ammonia one, it says corrosive, which is not good. <laughs> And the, uh, I think this is the nitrate one. It says irritant and harmful too. So you want to be very careful with these things. And if you're under the age of 18 um, and your parents do not know that you purchased this, I definitely give a talk with your parents about it because um, you don't want to end up hurting yourself and them not knowing that you, uh, what you have done. Um, but once you're careful with it, you should be fine. I just want to make sure people know that it can be harmful to you and your fish. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing that you'll need. And I can assure you that over time, you will find yourself using this product less, but that doesn't mean that you won't need it at all because it's great for just checking up on your water. Um, another thing you will need is uh, fish food. Fish food, you with the fish flake method, uh, you add your fish flakes, a pinch of it, in your aquarium every 12 hours. And you will do this for uh, three to six weeks. And obviously, you will need to test the water, uh, usually after a week of starting this, to test to see where your ammonia is at first. Um, because that's the first chemical that comes out of this and then your nitrites and then your nitrates and then really you will want to test all three of them um, to see where everything's at because uh, what you really want ideal conditions is zero ammonia zero nitrites and any level of nitrates because usually at the end you want to um, perform a really big uh, partial water change usually around 80 to 90 percent uh, to get those nitrates down because they can usually be in the hundreds of parts per million. They're usually pretty high. And like I said, under 20 parts per million is good depending on the type of fish you get. Um, see, this tester is a big one. That's the master test kit, but you can also buy them in smaller um, uh, individual testers as well. Um, I bought these first when I, uh, I didn't, I couldn't even find a master test kit where I lived. So, um, I had to go have a family member when they went away, get it for me, uh, to the States. <laughs> and it's, I think around $35. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I'm sure the, uh, prices vary from, uh, country to country. And this one was 1850 and this is just the nitrate testing kit. Um, and there's other methods of how to do this as well. Um, you can use raw shrimp or fish in a uh, stocking, um, and that usually will put a constant stream of ammonia in the, your aquarium for the entire t uh, cycle. Or you can uh, use pure ammonia. Um, I personally don't ever consider using that. Um, but I definitely recommend you research that as much as you possibly can before even trying it because a lot of people I'm sure have purchased ammonia and then it has perfume in it or some other chemical and then um, it's the whole tank is ruined really um, because of that. 
Um, so that's definitely something you want to research. And all of this you need to research anyway, in case I've missed something, hopefully not. Um, but a few tips are, you will notice your water will uh, evaporate and it'll get lower. All you can really do, you don't have to do a water change while you're fishless cycling, um, but just add more dechlorinated and conditioned water. Don't mess with your filter because that's the main place where your bacteria want to colonize and your gravel too. So don't really like stir up the gravel or don't even clean your filter for like the first three months unless it's getting, it, it's really, really bad. You want to rinse it always in old fish tank water. You never want to rinse it in, in tap water because this can kill that bacteria and then it can start what we call a mini cycle. Also, if you've ever noticed that your water gets cloudy when you are cycling, this is absolutely normal. What this is, is called a bacterial bloom. And this is where the bacteria are just starting to get uh, colonized and they haven't found their way onto a hard surface. So they cloud up the water, essentially. Um, there is a little bit of controversy as to um, the fish flake method because it can add phosphates to the water and this can cause a, uh, a bloom in algae. Um, personally, I've had this problem, but not with all of my aquariums. My 55 gallon aquarium doesn't have a speck of algae and if it does, um, it's not a lot at all. So, however, another tank of mine, my 20 gallon, I mean, it's it's covered in algae, but that's my oldest tank too. And I don't mind the algae. It's really your preference. Um, it's really your personal preference, but I found the fish flake method to be very easy. And that's just my personal take on it. Um, am I leaving anything out? That is the question. Um, I guess I'll show you in another video uh, as to how I test my water. Um, I'll show that to you. I'll probably, hopefully, do that today. And if you have any questions, just feel free to comment or message me on YouTube. Um, and I will be sure to get back to you and try to answer to the best of my abilities. And, um, uh, what else? I'm sorry, I'm like, uh, going on and on silently here. Um, oh yes, one very important thing is do not use fish to cycle your tank. This is like the worst thing and most inhumane thing you can do because the ammonia and nitrites are so harmful to them and really a lot of fish never make it through a cycle but yet people, some people stick by this. And I just, I, I've never understood that when you can do the same thing just as easily without hurting any fish. So yeah, um, I will have some links in the uh, bar below to some helpful websites that may not all agree with what I'm saying, but they will have some great information. And I hope you check that out. I hope that this video has helped. And uh, peace and love and have a good day.